the journey of grief through the holidays. Sensitive topic, big topic, very sensitive. So let's get to it. A lot of people have heightened emotions, especially during holiday seasons. Now the holidays we're talking about here are between, basically between Thanksgiving through the Hanukkah Christmas season, up through New Year's and a little bit past New Year's, right? This is a hypersensitive time. Of course, there are so many other holidays throughout the year, but this particular time of year is a very, very stressful, beautiful memorial time for most people. Now, the journey of grief involves that which has broken our hearts, right? We call it a journey because grief is not static. It doesn't sit still. It always seems to be present around us. And when we think of the word grief during the holidays, most people, and I think most people, think of grief of those who have crossed over, those who have died. But there are other types of grief as well, which we're going to touch on uh, throughout this little talk that we're having tonight. The definition of the word grief or the feeling of the word grief is that there is this unbearable suffering of the heart, this unbearable, uh, terrible twisting and turning in the wind of thorns and feeling like one can't get rest, one is constantly in torment. The sense of searching, the sense of constant absence, the sense of suffering. And yes, grief is a suffering. There is no question about it. But as I've often spoken of, even shared on my Facebook page, uh, grief is the result of knowing great love. Unfortunately, I have met people who really don't grieve a great deal. They may reflect on a person. They may say, yeah, that was a you know, she was okay, or he was okay, or I barely knew my parents, and I never got married, I never took on a wife, I had no kids, you know, I have a very small background, you know, basically I'm a loner. For them, grief is a different type, you know, it's a different type of grief, but when you're dealing with people who have a family, people who have had spouses, people who have had devoted parents, when you're dealing with people with all respect who have uh, have children and have buried a child, have lost a child, uh, the grief can be palpable. It can almost drive a stake through somebody's heart. I mean, it really, really can be rough. So to journey through this grief, one of the great teachings is to, is to try to stay as present as possible when grief is beginning to show its head. Now, I want to be clear about this. For certain people, when grief comes about, when they feel this rising sense of sadness, this terrible angst, this sleepless night, they look to kind of move away from it, get rid of it, push it to the side. Some people may do it with medication, people may do it with alcohol, people may do it with other types of distracted uh, chemistry. Other people may do it through watching movies. People may do it by sitting alone in their room. People do it by pulling the blankets over their heads. What I'm responding to here is the various types of avoidance of the grief. But if you really look closely at what grief is, it is a calling of your heart out to the one or the ones who are no longer physically present with you. Grief in itself, my friends, is a love letter. It may be sent through tears and sorrow, but it is one of the deepest forms of devotion. Grief is one of the deepest forms of the expression of love. Grief is one of the deepest forms of a love letter that is sent from us in the physical plane to those that live in the spiritual world. I have shared this over some period of time in my various comments and talks that when asked, most people, most people will say that the loved ones that have moved along, speaking of death right now, the ones that have crossed over, the ones that have died, have gone from this physical experience to elsewhere. They have gone away from us 
to some uncharted territory out there someplace. Some people call it crossing over. Some people say they've gone to heaven. Some people say they've gone to the other side. Some people say they're in another dimension. Whatever the variation is, they make these comments and these statements. And this is really one of the causes of their great suffering because grief driven by that thought process, grief sensing that there is a complete separation and absence that can tear a hole through you. There's no question about it. If you're a mother that's buried a daughter or buried a son or buried your spouse, and you absolutely have been convinced by else or others that they have gone to Never Never Land, they have moved to this untouchable, unseen, unfelt place beyond all human experience, it can create great distress. I mean, let's be fair about this. It can make your heart sting but the truth of it is different now i'm saying this not only as a medium but as a direct experience for myself a young man once spoke uh, a young fellow that died on the cross the christ child whose birthday is coming up actually the next week in the christian cultural tradition uh, this preparation season we call the advent season is preparing us for the miraculous virgin birth of the Christ child, Jesus. And when that young child grew into an adult man, he grew up with great wisdom, great understanding, great insight. For many people, they call him the son of God, including myself, but others just consider him to be a prophet or a spiritual teacher or whatever variation you like, it's fine. But at one point that young man was asked, where is this place called heaven? And that young man said, that the kingdom of heaven is always within you, always around you, meaning there has been no separation from their soul to your soul. So there is no real journey that has to be taken place. I know I tagged the topic of this as the journey, but the journey is in place. It's settled where you are now. So when you are grieving for someone who has physically crossed, yes, you want to wrap your arms around them. Yes, you want to hear their voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, you want them to open their present under the Christmas tree. Yes, you want them to pull a candy bar out of their stocking hanging off of the fireplace or hanging off your kitchen counter, or whatever the case might be. Yes, when you spin the dreidel or you light the menorah, you may reflect good thoughts and think of them. This is all beautiful stuff and never stop doing it. They respond, they respond. Their energy, their soul, their essence reacts to this. So to emphasize this with you, I know for many of you, you see grief as this very dark, cowled figure in a hood. It is not true. It is not. Your grief is the love letter out to them. I do miss you and I'll tell you, I have met so many people that did deeply love in life. They did. They really were very embracing, very loving, very nurturing, expressing great love and by their behaviors and by their voices and by their hugs and kisses. And they did. And they did. Right? But that does not have to discontinue. The form has fallen away because of sickness or injury or accident or other factors. But the essence, the soul of love is here and has, will never separate from you. Now, that being said, when we have memorialized experiences, meaning the Christmas tree, the menorah, the grave blanket, the major on the fireplace, the, um, uh, the Christmas ornaments that have a particular date or a particular name, perhaps you're grieving the loss of your pet. Maybe you have a cat or a dog I met a young woman recently who lost her horse, a beautiful, beautiful animal crossed over by natural old age, and her horse died, and it broke her heart. When there is great grief, it implicates and suggests there is great attachment, right? But true love, and I mean true love, doesn't really attach. True love allows the presence of that soul to be free in its own path. Now, I know for a lot of you that is very, very difficult to accept, 
I, I get it. I get it. When someone loves someone deeply, you like you love your children, like I have four kids and I love each one of them, right? It's very hard for me not to feel attached to my kids. I don't feel unattached. I do feel the attachment. But when they leave the house or they move out of state or they go away to school, part of that attachment is shaken. It's almost a preparation to let my soul know that at one point in time, they will move into a different space emotionally. They will move into a different space physically. They will commit their heart and soul perhaps to a wife or a partner or a career or an occupation. They may commit to a new location and they may not have the same depth of attachment that you did for them. It's not a fault. It's not a defect in them. It is frankly the pull of life telling them to grow and expand in their own personal, natural way without the unnecessary influence and the pulling and the tugging of people who want to keep them close, not for their growth, but because they feel rather shaky or insecure in their absence. And folks, I get this, I know this, I went through it with my kids, it was heartbreaking for me to watch my children move out and grow. I've been through it. I understand it. Now, going back to the parents who are grieving, the spouses who are grieving, the siblings who are grieving, uh, those that have lost their moms and their dads or their grandparents, the memorializing, as I shared before, the gray blankets and the lighting of candles, perhaps playing certain Christmas songs. For those who have been a little older like me, you may think of... Uh, Bing Crosby or Frank Sinatra or some of the great legendary Christmas voices. Some of you may think closer to more of a Mariah Carey or someone along that. And when those songs hit or when you see them performing in black and white on TV from the old days or the new high-end stuff you see on TV and LED and all that jazz, it can create a very emotional reaction. And there's nothing wrong with that. When I meet people who come to see me and they're crying in front of me after I'm done a reading, I tell them, cry a lot. You must cry. Cry is extremely important. It brings tears, but if you're going to cry, cry for their peace, cry for their happiness, cry for their joy. And why do I say this? Because their joy and happiness and peace. They have entered the realm of the peace of forever. There is no more suffering, there is no more sorrow, there is no more distance. And yes, I know what you're saying, but they're not here. I get it, because we all relate as human beings to the physical absence. Even in the animal kingdoms, you will see dogs laying on graves, cats that won't move anymore. Uh, you'll see uh, lions or elephants, they lay down next to their dead, next, their, next to their partner, they lay down next to their dead child, and they grieve. So grieving is part of the healing process. So as you go through this Hanukkah Christmas season, as you go through these holidays, let the grief accentuate the deep love and let your grief speak. Don't suppress it. Oh, I'm not grieving that much anymore. Oh, I don't do this. Oh, I don't do that. Please, you help them heal. When I mean heal, you help their soul grow when you celebrate with love, when you celebrate with great compassion, if you send out the signal to the soul that because of your death, you have wounded me, you have caused me harm, you have broken my heart, the vibration is different. It's a different vibe. If you say, for whatever reasons, your body fell to addiction, a cancer took you from me, a car accident took you from me. I woke up in the morning and you had died in bed next to me. My heart is broken. All of this can be reflected in the twinkling of Christmas lights, the sound of music, a glass of wine tapping at a, at a Christmas dinner, the New Year bell coming in, the ball dropping in Times Square, and you're thinking about your husband who you are anxious to meet in the future at some point in time. Now, when people say this to me, I do my very, very best, <coughs> excuse me, to try to show them that they were searching for in the future 
is here right now. But they insist that it comes back almost like Lazarus from the grave, like a rising from the dead. They want them to walk through the front door again. And who wouldn't want that? But they can't give you that. But what they can give you and what they do give you, and as you stand around the manger, and as you stand and do Christmas songs, or you're crying in your chair quietly at night before Christmas Eve, whatever it may be, they come to you. And you know how you know they come to you? Because you will feel a sense of peace in you, a quietness in you. The tears will be flowing. And I'm going to say this to you too. I want to talk about tears for a minute. Tears are the unspoken prayers. God gave us tears to wash our soul. God gave us tears to be reflective in our soul. God gave us tears as an offering, almost like holy water would be to some Christians. It washes the soul, it cleans it. And more importantly, and what's most important, is that it sends a beautiful spiritual light, a grace, a gift of compassion to say, I honor your journey. I honor it. My heart is broken. I miss you so much. But I believe in you. I trust in you. The Christ child's birth is coming up. Come spring season, we will, in quiet moments, think of his death and his passing. But there is always this season of renewal. There is this wonderful season of renewal. And for my Jewish friends, right? The menorah is lit, the candles are lit for what should have lasted a few hours, lasted eight days in the Jewish tradition. It kept the lights lit when all light was impossible, when they should have fallen into shadow, when fallen into darkness. The oil stayed lit for eight full days in the Jewish faith, a tremendous sign of God's great love and grace. And let's not forget that the holiday season it's not just about having a few glasses of wine and opening up gifts. We all know that. Many people, quite honestly, are tired of that stuff, right? They just want to, I mean, the parties are fun and all that jazz, right? But when you really get down to it, the holidays are a time of renewal. It's a time of memory. It's a time of innocence again. It's about a rebirth. And when you send out to your family the sense of rebirth, when you send out to your beautiful daughter or your beautiful son or your husband or your brother, I am with you, I love you, I pray to you, I know you're with me, I am here with you. Come to church with me, come to synagogue with me, just come to the beach with me, sit in the woods with me, be with me, be present. This is the greatest gift you can give them. You can place things at the grave. You can put little trinkets out underneath the tree. You can put things on the shelves. You can do all of that. All of those physical little characteristics are perfectly fine. They're coming from love. They're coming from memory. They're coming from a good heart. Sure, do it. Absolutely do it. Do it. But before you do any of it or after you do it all, either way, sit still and really open your heart to them and say, I absolutely love you, I am with you, I miss you so much, I know you're with me, I know you're here, I can feel you in my soul. It does not mean I don't miss touching you and holding you and kissing you. And you also tell them that because that is part of your human condition. Please understand true spirituality is being fully human not modifying it because of some social pressures not to do this or not to do that or don't do this or you stop grieving by now. The heck with all that stuff. You have to be true to thy own self and the beauty of thy own light, right? Now, there are other types of grief where someone is sick at this time of year. There is a people that have their children in military service halfway around the world. There are people who have just been diagnosed with a severe stroke or someone was badly burned or someone is in the hospital or someone had a child run away from home and they can't locate them. There is lots of reasons why people have this angst and this grief and it's simply amplified during this time of year. Trust me when I tell you this, when a mother has a child who is in a really, really sick unit in the hospital, she doesn't care if it's the middle of August or Christmas Day. Her grief as a mother transcends all time. Holidays be damned, I wanna be with my child. That's a mother talking. 
And that's the father talking too, by the way, because I've been through that. I've lived through those really life-challenging situations. I have. And I've experienced my dad's passing. I watched my mother cross in front of me. My baby brother passed away. As a matter of fact, my brother's birthday is in this month, the one that crossed eight years ago. My brother's child has moved along. He's also in heaven, in spirit, heaven being here with us, with me, with family. Not out there in Never Never Land. I'm asking you, I'm hoping you understand the intentions of this talk. This holiday season gives you a full opportunity to celebrate them, to be joyous for their rising soul that has risen to the breath of God, that has gone into the embrace of the beloved, that is being held regardless of your faith, regardless of what you call it, regardless. The essence has lifted itself into its source. It has gone back to the creation itself from which we will all come from, which we've all come from, and we which will all return. This, my friends, is the manger scene. This is the gift of hope given to the Christians and the Catholics and people all around the world who care to pay attention, not to the ritual of it, not to the stories about it. Well, some people don't believe in Christ. That's fine. I, no one's judging anyone here. But it's the essence of the teaching given through this one child through his one amazing story. That is the key. Hope, peace, love. The grief itself is part of your journey. It's part of your travels. You will always carry it. Let me tell you something. When someone says to me they no longer grieve their child, I don't believe them. When someone tells to me I no longer grieve my brother that died, I struggle to believe them. I really do. But what some people will do is they will just come up with reasons why they should stay distant. They don't want to do it. They distract themselves from it. They don't want to pay attention of it. That was a long time ago. All of that rhetoric. And for me, they are always present. I don't have to get rid of them. I don't have to beg them. I don't have to plead with them. I can feel them. And not because I do what I do. I'm no different than you guys. They are with you. So when you go through this holiday season and you cut a piece of turkey or offer a piece of ham or have a glass of apple cider or have a glass of wine, whatever makes you feel good, do it with them. Do it for them. Leave an empty seat at the dining room table. Let them know. Talk to them as though you're talking to me right now. This is the way you enter through this holiday season. And when the holidays come to its conclusion, when we're sitting in the January, when it's cold and snow is coming down maybe, nothing changes. Remember, the holidays are a human experience. They are in a holiday season 24-7, seven days a week. No more stress, no more pain, no more sorrow. Just simply their divine light, their beautiful presence that never, ever, ever leaves you. So as you go through this holiday, as you journey from today forward, have a sigh, shed a tear, put your head in the pillow, cry a lot, Stand up and say, all of that was for you, my love. That's how much I love you. I do miss your body. I do miss you. I do miss you. I do miss you. But I also know you're here. I know your soul had to take a different path. And I'm here for you. And for those that are struggling with other types of grief, you are offered the challenge. You are offered the opportunity to trust in the faith of your own soul. You are offered the opportunity to trust in the faith in the souls of those that are not present. If you have deep faith and you have deep trust in the ones you love, let it shine. Give them the approval of their own life's path. Let them know that you pray for them, that you love them in your own way. Send them Christmas cards, do whatever you need to do, send them a text. Let them know if they don't respond, they don't respond. You have done your part. 
Do it with love. Do it with love. Do it with love. Please celebrate this Christmas Hanukkah season with all the love you got. It's not about the ritual. It's all about the love. And love will heal everything. They know that. Now it's up to you guys to know that too. I want to wish you all a very blessed, Merry Christmas, very happy holidays, a very special Hanukkah week for all of you again, from my family to yours. Thank you for joining me.